Hi, I'm Jackie and I'm a compulsive gambler. I have never sat at a Gamblers Anonymous meeting. I've been one too ashamed, despite the fact that everybody there is going through the same thing as me. And also, while well, they're not really available in my area, um, but I was on YouTube yesterday and I found this lovely woman who shared her story, which inspired me to share mine because her video saved me yesterday. And it was comforting to know that there are other people going through the same issues. And when you listen to all of our stories, it could be different games, slots, cards, roulette, betting, you know, whatever. But the, uh, the emotions attached to it, they seem to be the same. Our stories are very similar most of the time. Mine started with bingo 10 years ago a little bit over 10 years ago actually um i put in uh, what was maybe like 10 us there was a bonus of 10 us and i won i think maybe 200 dollars everybody tells you the first win that's what sets you off so before i continue and those of you who might not be there yet, on your knees, rock bottom, seek help, seek treatment, speak to somebody and stop. Because it's not fun. It's not worth it. It is a silent killer. It is an addiction. It is an addiction that might not show the physical signs of what we classify as an addiction. It is one that hurts you so much hair on hair. It strips you of who you are. It turns you into somebody that you don't want to be, that you don't recognize. And then I won't say when it's too late because it's never too late. But when when you get there and you realize it's time to change, it's very difficult. It's not impossible, but it's extremely difficult. And it, it breaks down your confidence, your self-worth, your relationships. It compromises everything. It not only steals your money, it steals your time. It steals your soul, man. It's so fucking fucked up, gambling. So, I'll share my story. I know many people know this story, of course, because there's so much shame attached to it. And for me, seeing that I haven't sought treatment, which I probably should, which is going to be my next step, um, I feel like I need to get it off my chest. I have a loving boyfriend. I have a loving daughter. But I feel like I cannot share these things with them. Of course, definitely not with my daughter. I think my boyfriend knows. Well, he definitely knows he's seen me camera. But he doesn't know how bad it is. My family doesn't know how bad it is. My friends don't know anything. And I need to get this off my chest if I'm going to move on. Because I know it's possible. Anyway. So it started off with bingo 10 years ago. And it just progressed. The winnings were quite nice in the beginning. They were quite frequent. And I think like with many compulsive gamblers, you realize that, or you think, 
that this is quite easy. It's really easy to get some extra money this way. And it's almost as if as soon as you decide that in your brain, then the losses come. And the losses are continuous. And then you just end up chasing your losses. I smile a lot when I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> That's a coping mechanism. But my story continues with me chasing the losses, not paying my tuition. I was, I'd done pre-med, got into med school, but I had to leave because I couldn't pay my tuition because I gambled it all away. Not once, not twice, but three times. People who had been working really hard for that money helped me and I blew it all away. Um, drinking started after that. I've always been a cannabis smoker since being a teenager. <clears throat> I come from an island, so it's almost part of our culture. But this wasn't anything to do with culture or to relax. It became a way to turn my head, turn everything off. And substance abuse is synonymous with gambling. Pretty much in every case, you walk around with a lovely smile, and people would, you, you know, people never really expect that somebody's a gambler unless you see them at a casino, unless you see them with the slot machines, you know? You can't tell a gambler from any other person just, you know, by seeing them. And uh, it becomes. It becomes almost like, you, you know, you, you develop these two lives. You, you are living a double life. You know, after chasing the losses, you don't want to know how much you, you're down. You, you just fuck up your head so much that the only thing that you could think about was winning. Winning back that money to repay debts to repay people and then you think that if I just had this much then I will stop then I'll be able to move on with my life and be a normal person and that's not the case it's taken me 10 years 10 years of lies of pain of anxiety of lost relationships, a loss of everything for me to come to a point where I feel so hopeless that the only thing I could do is just to stop and put every last bit of energy that I have in me into stopping. When I gamble, I don't think about my family. I don't think about my daughter, as sick as it sounds. Nobody can interrupt me when I am in the zone. Nobody matters. My hygiene doesn't matter. Eating doesn't matter. None of those basic necessities matter. I don't think about how I'm going to pay rent, how I'm going to pay my bills, put food on the table, because I assume that I'm going to win, but subconsciously I know that I'm going to lose. <clears throat> I'm sure there are a lot of you suffering, unless there's something that you don't want anybody to go through, not even your worst enemy. It, I hurt so much because we're hiding so much. 
and you're hiding behind a mask of shame. Disgrace, most times poverty. And it, it tears you down so much because you can't be your authentic self. I've tried numerous, I've tried numerous ways to get quick fixes. You know, like there's you know, self-exclusion, asking somebody to check on your finances and stuff, but there's always a way around it. Because our brains become so rewired when we're addicted that <laughs> that is almost impossible if it is it's second nature to you. It's first nature. It's, it's more than a habit. It's ingrained in you. You know that dopamine kick? For me it was slots. It is still is slots. The noise, the colors, the bonus games. And you know, like, anything that I went through, I had a long day at work, then I would long to come home to my phone when everybody goes to sleep, to be in the couch in darkness and play for hours, losing so much money each time. And then we didn't to bed about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning with tears in my eyes and panic attacks and anxiety because I've relived the same scenario so many times and I kick myself like why? Why? But it's just so consuming. <clears throat> After I um, had to leave university I lived with my mom for a bit. I was there for a few months and I remember I remember telling her because she was one of those who helped me out for tuition. And I tried to explain I tried to explain it to her. But I think she pretty much thought that it was like, you know, well, you did it now it's over move on and I felt like I was so misunderstood so I remember the night I was about 23 years old I had gone out with a friend and we were drinking I returned home I went into the garage I caught I got a piece of rope and I went up to our balcony and I looped the rope around a beam in the ceiling and I looked at that noose feel like this anymore. And uh, by God's grace, my mom, she, she woke up and she walked upstairs and she, and she saw it and I don't know if she really understood what was going on, but I, I quickly took it down and so we sat down there in silence. We've never spoken about it since. I think that sometimes it's, it's so much for the people involved, your family and your friends. Sometimes it becomes so much for them as well, they don't even have the words. 
I have a lot of addicts around me, but a lot of them are drug addicts. It just seems that I'm drawn to that crowd of misfits, people who are hurting. And uh, I remember one of them even saying, oh, I can't believe but that's so stupid. You don't even get a rush from it. You don't even get a high. And I thought to myself, you're fucking right. <laughs> I'm paying for not even a substance. I'm, I'm paying for flashing lights and sounds. That's it. I mean, I could watch TV instead if I wanted that. But no. No, I chose. I chose gambling. Um. After my daughter was born, I. <coughs> I remember the day that I was supposed to be induced. I I was at home and I was counting. When we got to the hospital and um, you know nothing was happening yet. I remember laying there in the bed and I was looking at my phone and you know like trying to verify myself so I can make a withdrawal. My daughter was being born. That day, that's what I was thinking about. I've never shared that with anybody. After she was born, um, I had postpartum depression. Then I didn't know what it was. But I called my clinic and I said, No, I'd really like to speak to someone. I explained what it was about, that it was mainly gambling, but also, um, you know, just the hardships of going through postpartum depression and being a first time mom. And there was a long wait in this, maybe like six months or so, but she told me that she made an exception because she knew that it, all of this it would be such a, a, a trigger. And the fact that I'm at home with my child, you know, it gives me access to the internet constantly, pretty much. Um, I don't want to comment and say that she wasn't a good psychologist, but she didn't really help me. She was really easy to fool, and as a gambler, you, you are very manipulative. You are. It's a dirty truth, but you are a liar, you know, like a compulsive gambler, you're a compulsive liar. And unfortunately, she couldn't see through all my bullshit, so I never really gave it a fair chance. I never really received any therapy there. Instead, it kind of pushed me more towards it, because I felt like, well, if therapy can't help, then nothing will. After that, um, my relationship with my daughter's father ended. There were also a lot of issues there about, you know, my my economy and um, being on maternity leave, not having a cent. But as soon as I got a cent, then I would gamble it away. He was sweet enough; he bailed me out the first time. I think it was about six grand that I had in debt. Anyway, we separated. That threw me off whatever, you know, like progress that I was making. And it just got worse and worse. I felt trapped, I felt hopeless. I started hitting the puddle a little bit too hard. I felt like a worthless mum, a worthless person. I wasn't even a fraction of who I used to be, you know? I didn't recognise myself. Um, all the, like, so much weight loss. I think one time I was even down to, I've always been quite tiny, but... I went down to 42 kilos. That's not much. Um, 
I was a shell of a human being. And a friend told me about mushrooms, you know, psilocybin mushrooms. And I did that. <clears throat> I did a, a quite a, a large dose. It helped me tackle other traumas or difficult times in my life. And it's, it's like if you've ever done mushrooms, it's a very spiritual experience. It's a grounding experience. It could be a purge. And for me, the first time it was that. Um, my father, who had passed, um, came up, you know, all of the, so many things came up, but unfortunately not the gambling. I thought that this would be the answer. This, because, you know, I've read that in addiction, especially like smoking and opioid abuse, that mushrooms tend to work. So I thought that would be my savior. It wasn't. I learned a lot about myself through that journey. And it did give me a lot of tools to stay alive the years following. And then, you know, that I'm in, what is my 10th year, 10th, 11th year of counseling, <clears throat> I gambled away my rent food, money, no bills are paid, like the past due date for everything, um, I work full time but because of all of my debts and the state, they take about 60-70% of my paycheck every month. That goes to its debts without me even seeing it when it gets to my account. And that, I mean, how, how do you recover from that? It doesn't even matter if you work an extra job, then they just take even more, more money. And already working full time with a child, you know, like how, how do you rise up from that? Well, of course, then I think if I can, well, then there is a chance. Fucking moron, right? Well, that's the spiral that I've been living in. I've been receiving a lot of signs. I like to see them as signs from the universe. That even though I have done this to myself and to my family and to my friends, there is a reason for it. And some of those signs included seeing that video yesterday when I was thinking that nobody would notice if I were gone. That it would be better for everyone if, if I just didn't exist. When you start feeling like you don't exist, or you don't want to exist. It's so, it's so difficult to be in this living realm. And um, another sign was that I didn't a purge last week um, with mushrooms. I do it once a year, um, and unlike every other time. This time, I feel like instead of that process of purging, you know, like crying, yawning, spitting, vomiting, and going over to that aspect of working through your pain, you know, like getting a grip and understanding of your pain. And then normally for me, the last phase is this phase of unbelievable love and gratitude and appreciation and you just want you know like the world to be on it so they could understand that we are all connected while well, your girl didn't fucking receive any of that instead 
I approached it like I always do, saying these are my intentions with this. This is, these are the questions I'd like answered. These are the feelings that I want answered. Instead, I just got more questions. I did not feel relieved. I felt depleted. And I wrote to a friend who's also on a spiritual journey. She's not a gamma though. And she said that she experienced the same thing with mushrooms after a while. And she realized that she had to go deep into herself and heal herself. That she became enlightened and she knows the healing properties of that. But then at some point you just have to heal yourself. Now I have an Instagram account where called The Mental Hustle where I have been pretty much, you know, like making videos about <clears throat> about how to let things go and forgiving yourself and I feel like such a fraud. I haven't shared this story there. I've shared the periphery of it talking about how I feel and the distractions and addictions and recovery and all of those things but never touched down on one of the, the largest things eating me alive stealing my energy, stealing my soul stealing me and uh, it's, it's time to stop living in that life To you, to you who is looking at this video and feeling helpless and hopeless, I understand. And sometimes you just want to be hurt and understood. You know what, you're not a bad person, you might have done bad things in order to feed this addiction. You might have hurt a lot of people and you have hurt yourself. As hard as it is in order for you to move past it. You need to sit in your mess and feel those awful feelings from a sober mind and cry and look at your losses and think about the time that you have wasted and that could be a stepping stone to recovery because nobody wants to feel this way. And then I think as a gambler, you always think that if only I wasn't a gambler, I'd be perfect. I bet a lot of you think like that. I think like that. Well, not, you know, like perfect, perfect, but my life would be good. But then how do we get that part out of the equation? Because I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. One day at a time. Sometimes it's one minute at a time. And this might be one of the most depressing videos I've ever made. But I feel like I have, I have for once been a little bit honest. It's a really long time since I've been honest with myself. And hopefully, Hopefully this might help just someone in the smallest of ways. I've been feeling like this is this is a death sentence because it's, I've just been doing it so many times. I know, I know what's gonna happen. I know how it feels, and yet I continue. Um, I asked for for there was this um expert in addiction in the shitty town that I live in and um, yeah somebody somebody referred me to him and when I went there was, you know he's talking about we had like the first consultation and I thought wow you know this is this is gonna be my therapist this is this is how I get treatment and then he says the cost of it would be like eight hundred dollars a month. 
if I had $800 a month left over, do you think that I would be paying for that? No, because then I wouldn't be a gambler. Then I would have those $800 left over every single month. And um, I live in Sweden, by the way. But I know in, in most other countries, like especially the US, well, North America, you know, you can find them everywhere. All of these uh, Gamblers Anonymous meetings. And unfortunately here, the meeting is every other week, once a week. So that's not very conducive, because to me at least, because most of the times that's when I'm at work, on a Monday. And um, I feel like I have to go through this myself. And I'm just praying for strength to be able to, because I'm tired of living this way and I bet you are too. I'm like, you know, just skin and bone. Uh, I don't know the last time when I didn't go a day without crying. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to start somewhere, right? Anyway, I hope that someone out there who might be watching this video I hope that you realize that under all of those layers of your addiction, you are still there. You're beautiful. You're a beautiful person who unfortunately became plagued with this disease. And um, I hope you can get through it. I will be making another video with a little bit more in-depth into my actual addiction, what I have done. Sometimes maybe you need to tell scary stories in order to deter somebody. And um, for me, it's also a purge. It's also being able to vent as public as, you know, as the platform is. It's easier to do it here than, I guess, to the people that you are closest to. And I'm working up the courage to get there. Because more than anything, I just want to be free. I want to feel freedom. I want to feel love again. Because I'm in a, in a mental prison. And, um, and my body is following suit. You know, you become introvert. I want to leave your home. <sighs> so, let's pray that we get through it. We will. Take care.